Okay, hello everybody. It's a pleasure to have Kostav Ganguly here with us today. So Kostav is a PhD student uh, in IIT Bombay. He's working with uh, Professor Priti Rao uh, on music related technology, which we'll talk about today. But what probably he will not talk or demonstrate here today is he's an excellent vocalist uh, and he has been taking training from Pandit Ajay Chakravarti for how many years? 18 years. 18 years now, so you can imagine. <laughs> okay, Kostav, you can you know tell more about it. Good afternoon everyone. Thanks Manojit for the introduction. So today I'll talk about a little bit of my research. It will be a broad overview. I can't go into great detail of everything but I'll try to motivate why I am doing the approach and I would very much like your valuable suggestions and please feel free to stop me at any point. So the title I have given is how different is different. So I'll come into that more closely and it's a perspective on music similarity and especially on Indian art music. So I'll focus mainly on Hindustani or the North Indian music. And as of now I'm doing my PhD and midway of my PhD under Professor Preeti Rao at IIT Bombay. So why do I start with music at the first place? Because the lab I work on was mainly working on speech and so Apart from being a musician myself, I appreciate music. Also music, the purpose of musical message is more of towards cognitive and affective domain rather than speech. Like you enjoy the same music pitch, a piece every time you listen to it. So, and the main goal is to redefine the distance measures. Like if two entities are there, they are similar. The human ears can perceive that they are similar, but there is a difference. But we have been always using the state of the art distance measure like Euclidean or dynamic time hopping. But can we know the signal little bit more closely so that we can re-adapt the distance measure? <coughs> and the goal is to estimate the space of variability. Like Indian music especially is full of improvisation. So there is maybe one or two canonical forms of the phrase and then singers add their own colors. So that is improvisation. So if we ask musicians, can you utter, say, 20 realizations of this phrase, they utter 20 and they'll be 20 different. But they can't say, okay, this is the limit beyond which it will be incorrect. So the space is unlimited, but we are trying to find a limited space between which that is bound, named as the same. So that will motivate us to find a good distance measure. And another important thing is the time scale of psychoacoustic relevance. So Perception study in this MIR is not very rigorously done in Indian music, but the time scale, I mean a tone, click and a note or a phrase, these are of different time durations and the memory processing in the brain cortex all are differently done. So <coughs> in engineering we do all signal processing by windowed analysis, but what the feature window should be used between which the calculation of the characteristic should be done. So if a phrase is say 4-5 seconds, human short term memory processes it with at a go. So they may assign a shape or something. So there is literature on that. But if it's a 10 seconds long phrase, it might not be processed at one go. It might be broken into chunks. So we should also adapt the analysis window size based on that. So that was one of the motivations. So how different is different is the scale of degree of difference. So in uh, Perception, I'll come how it, uh, we have speculated something from speech literature and the broad perspective of this MIR work, uh, in my opinion, has these four perspectives. One is the acoustics, the signal we work on as signal processing engineers. The psychoacoustics is the perception, what the ear hears. But finally, the cognition is important, what we make out of it. So after the ear receives the signal, we perceive it not as some def discrete frequency but some note. We relate it to some musical note. So that comes under this branch and finally recognition happens we map that note to some raga or some other entity. So that depends on the musicological knowledge and experience. So the same signal fade to a musician who is say five years trained and 50 years trained, they will perceive it differently just because the recognition is different. The significance will be different. And the broad uh, outline of my talk will be this melodic motifs in Indian art music, 
I'll define what a motif is and the modeling and the perception. How can we computationally model the phrase and what are the perception correlates? So before starting this work, we have to first standardize the basis on which we do these melodic analysis and uh, this was very much uh, motivated from one of Manujit's talks also. So how musical is the music scale? He had his works on the music scales and those. So I had my PhD seminar on the same line. And just to mention music appreciation, like natural intervals are preferred by all living objects. So I'll just play an example here. So this is an example of a lullaby. So these has all consonant intervals, even infants show their preference to this without knowing any music. So the music scale, the musicality is inherent within the music. On the other hand, if we listen to this, a train honking. So this is some sound which is dissonant and no one prefers that and that is used to caution people. So music itself has its qualities, but we wanted to know what are the musicality of the music scale as in the scales, the tuning of the scales. Is it just intonation or is it the equitempered scale on the basis of which we will analyze the music. So this is one of the keywords that's why I kept here music and then, then comes the similarity. I kept a visual example because I think it's little more intuitive. So here are three pictures and all of us can directly point out these are similar because these are pictures of birds. And this is because we are having a top down view on it. But if a machine has to understand that these are birds and that's why these are similar. So from the bottom up approach they have to know what is the background, what is the foreground, what is the edge. So this is in computer vision they are having their problems. We are trying to do the same thing in computer audition that if there are a mixture of signals, many instruments are playing, human voice, human ears can focus to only the voice or only one instrument, can a machine do that? So that is the broad scope of our project, so that's the similarity. And just to introduce the project, so we are a, a project called Comp Music and in India we are having IIT Bombay and Madras as a part of it and in Barcelona we have UPF, the MTG, Professor Javier is leading. And the main motif of this project is to organize and make sense of music data, may it be audio which we are working on, or metadata, or text, or any semantic information. So we want to combine all this available information related to audio in a meaningful way. So one of the possibilities what we do or I do as a musician is a melodic structure analysis. So now the question comes, why do we have to do that? If already the CD has this much information. So this metadata is limited. This has only say the name of the raga or name of the composition but doesn't talk anything about the melody itself. So if we want to an analyze the melody, we have to go into its features. So I'll give just a small example. So this is the waveform of the audio and we have been able to extract the pitch and now this is kind of a solved problem to extract pitch from polyphony. So what is in interesting is kind of a pattern detection. If I give this as a query, say. <coughs> so this is an audio query. And we know that there are a lot of similar instances in the audio because this is the refrain of the song, but with variations. So can we get the outputs wherever variation is also present? <coughs> So see, this is another instance where the percussion instrument is also playing and there is variation in the vocal melody itself. But we can capture them as the same. So there is a degree of difference, but we want to capture that as the same. So this difference is not meant to be categorized separately, but these are categorized as the same. So that is the music similarity we are talking. So if we have a kind of block diagram, so from the audio, we can't directly model this primitive shape or the motif, the query I had. So we have to have a analysis by synthesis kind of structure. So first we extract the low level features like the pitch, which is kind of solved now. Now from this pitch, we, are have, we have to model up to these primitive shapes. 
so we are at this bottom up path now so as i mentioned the melodic motif i'll be following this path and this is an interesting diagram so one of the ted talks i found so if you are having a starting point a and targeting to get to b but as a byproduct you may might find something more interesting but we are not sure of the path so it's a fuzzy thing but eventually we might discover something new so i'll start with the modeling part so basically it says represent the melodic contour with cues from visualization so as we already have the pitch contour we can see the visual similarity now can computer mark the changes so i'll play this clip So this is just about 30 seconds of the audio. So could you hear some repeating patterns coming again and again? So some patterns are coming and visually we can see these are similar looking patterns. And also this overlapping blue contour that those are marked by the musicians as the ground truth. So those are recurring patterns. So there are variations. See here there are a lot more oscillations and here we are missing some. And even here, the pitch is missing, but the ear interpolates. So the hearing and cognition is a very complex process. We can't go into that. And also context dependence is heavily there. If something is already present, humans also anticipate the same thing to come. We can't model that, but purely from the signal, given this one dimensional contour, can we model this similarity? What is the distance to consider to mark if this is the query? to get this as a candidate. So that is the motivation. So one possible way to go is to do a dimension reduction. Because if we start with all samples of the pitch contour, there will be a lot of subtle variations which might not be relevant to the ears. So we tried a piecewise constant approximation. It can be called a note level transcription. So we had some heuristics like perceptually relevant the minimum note duration if it's within the glide so we don't perceive all the notes in between so we'll get rid of that and if there are two steady notes close by we'll not perceive this as a separate note so there are some heuristics to reach from this whole contour to this string representation so and also the motivating fact is that given this contour to any musician if they are told to write down or annotate they will go by this because they remember or they represent they like to represent by a sequence of steady notes so we thought this is a reliable representation but can this capture the whole story can this capture the essence so we'll have an example here So did you find the similarity by listening to all these four phrases? So also visually we can see this first three are having almost the similar shape and also the context. So this comes from a long steady note then comes down and having this shape. So these all are annotated as the same. This is called Dhani Dhapa in some Raga, Raga Aliya Bilawal by the algorithm. But this is a phrase from a separate Raga, a different Raga. But it happens such that the steady note sequence comes out to be the same. So if we oversimplify to this level, so then we are capturing something else as the same. So this might not be a very good representation or this is not capturing what the characteristic of the phrase is. But this is a good thing to represent 
or maybe this is a very reduced dimension, we can do a quick search on that. So the next idea was to do both ways. What is efficient representation for a quick search through database and what is a efficient representation to characterize the phrase? So then what we did, we went back to the pitch samples, but we can't really take a Euclidean distance point by point because there is time warping. So we used dynamic time warping to align the phrases and then took the distance. And just to validate that this is a valid distance measure, so we reported in 2014 that given the positive phrases and some negative phrases, with this DTW distance, we can cluster the positives towards a very narrow region. And we can separate out the other phrases which are negative to this. So this, to some extent, confirms that we can use this DTW as a good distance measure. And also, in Western music, there has been use of DTW, but that is in scores. But we are working on pitch data. But this is computationally very expensive. Also, uh, what was the window uh, size on which you applied DTW? Window size was the whole phrase. We took the phrase. Marked. Like yeah, marked. It was like four to five seconds. We aligned and then took the DTW on that. So what is the green and what is the red curve? Is yeah, green curve is the distance between the positives and positives. So if, say, A is the positive class, okay. so between A and A, the distance is very less. All data. Yeah, all label data. We just wanted to validate that DTW distance is a valid distance. But there is a yeah. significant uh, number of overlap. Yeah. yeah, so that is a long story. I'm not going into this. It's out of the scope. It is non-phrase dhanidapa. That comes under those kind of negatives mm -hmm. where the major portion of the phrase are having the same notes. But right. it's not positive because it not belongs to the same raga. But as the DTW is also taking distance between points and lot of the phrase, majority of the phrase is having the same notes, so then there is an overlap. So these are called non-phrase dhanidapa. We have called so it. You, this is still not enough to differentiate. Yes, between yes. Between your earlier scenario. earlier scenario. This is still not. So that's why still is the motivation to find a suitable distance measure for Indian music. Some interesting facts we found that this trade-off between these two representations. So if we go by pitch samples, so that is suited for characterizing the melodic shapes, like the glides and everything we are having in the representation. So we can represent the whole melody. But the discrete symbol sequence is suited for quick navigation. And we recently submitted a paper where we can have a dimension reduction of, say, complexity reduction of 3,000 times. And we are finding an accuracy close to within a tolerance of 5% with the DTW versus this transcribed note. So in real time application, this is very much feasible to implement. We don't bother if 5% accuracy is gone, but we can quickly search the whole database, navigate very quickly between phrases. 5% accuracy as opposed to? Uh, the difference is 5%. The classical DTW, that gave some 70%, and we can reach 65. Okay. But with a reduction of 3,000 times. So you're comparing with classical? Yeah, classical DTW. And also, this was a work uh, reported in last FRSM. Uh, Manujit was present there. So these representation of pseudo steady note segments, so this gave, the, this broken up the whole contour into two parts. One was the steady notes, and one was the transients. So we found that the pseudo steady note and this transient, this can be, like we can take an analogy of vowel consonant pair in the speech. So we observed that in the time warping of the two phrases, the most of the time warping is absorbed within the steady note sections, but the glides preserves its original duration. So that somehow motivates that the glides are showing the characteristics. So even I can just quickly give an example. So say I have a note sequence pa re. So pa re. Now if I sing pa re, this becomes rag chaya nut. Pa re becomes Kalyan, pa -re becomes Shud Kalyan. So these characteristic glide, this conveys the information which raga it belongs to. But these pa -re are used to just carry the energy. Because without these long steady notes, we can't build the performance. So similarly, in vowel consonant pair, say in shouted speech or stretched speech, we can't really stretch the consonant. We can stretch only the vowel. So this analogy uh, we found somewhat interesting, but this is 
more scope to there is more scope to explore i just wanted to mention so now i'll shift to the other part because i'm running out of time so in the perception the motivation is again revisit the distance measure to obtain the characteristic motifs so i'll break it down into sub parts so we speculate that the perception of phrases in hindustani music is categorical in nature it's not continuous perception so i'll quickly revisit and this is a theory from speech but in music there are previous works i'll just quickly go through and then experiment followed by the results so categorical perception essentially means enhanced within category similarity and enhanced between category differences so this figure is a famous one so this shows a mixed breed of hens here this is the real world scenario when the observer is not looking at it but when the observer is looking so he tries to minimize the intra class distance and maximize the inter class distance so this is a very quick analogy quick demonstration to show categorical perception and i'll refer as cp as of now so it was first introduced by liberman as motor theory of speech perception that human perceives a phoneme the way he produces it it's like the silent talker that goes on the brain when you hear something and a good experiment is if the physical variable is the direction and extent of the second form and transition and if it's varied linearly along a continuum so the perception changes very rapidly from b d to g so these are the identification scores so for some stimuli values these are identified as b suddenly it drops and it pers it is perceived as d and then g so this is a very famous theory categorical perception and in speech there has been a lot of work but in music there has been limited works so the tasks performed here are mainly twofold one is identification and another is discrimination and the distortions were in the dimension of temporally stretching so tonal duration manipulation and the melodic interval so as we didn't have any work on indian music we tried to very strictly follow this framework but we had to adapt it to indian music so how to draw a parallel to indian music so identification task can be posed as follows so given a phrase is this suggestive of a raga so can they identify or discrimination given a pair of phrases are the same or different can they discriminate between them and here it's kind of a reverse engineered way to find the space of variability because as we don't have the answer from the concert instances or from the musicians so if we have the boundary that after incorporating distortions to certain extent they are not perceived as the same so that can be estimated as the boundary of that variation space so that was the motivation and we kept the distortion in the same dimension that temporarily we time warp the phrase sub segments as we already have the steady note transcription and the pitch shift of a steady note segment that was just to start with and it's very important to find a good example because these parallel ragas there are a lot but we have to be very controlled in the experiment so we found this pair interesting so in rag deshkar so there is a temporal characteristic that the note re can't be stretched much it's only taken within a glide very short as opposed in bhopali is the nyas for so it's stretched very long and as the pitch the ga intonation is higher than the just scale it's called chadhi hui ga and in this the pitch is resembles the tanpura gandhar or the just intonation so there is striking difference in the dimensions we want so we try started with this and the motivation is to see do musicians pay attention to the subtle differences and also the time scale so if only the stimuli distortion is given can they identify and if it is embedded within a broad thing do they holistically perceive so that's how categorical thing this comes in the picture so then comes stimulus so we recorded this piece from a musician <laughs> so this is a phrase from rag deshkar this green is the original pitch contour and we had this steady note transcription as we had mentioned earlier but we wanted to stylize this pitch before incorporating any distortion because this vocal jitters these are natural spontaneous but this might not carry the same relevance all the points 
so if we magnify some of these this might blast out to some unmeaningful information so we wanted to stylize this not use the direct pitch contour so we synthesize this pitch by only having this midi kind of notes and we fitted polynomials in between glides because that was low in duration so it sounded like this <laughs> So this broadly captures the shape, but this can't be used as a stimuli for musicians because at first place they will not agree that this is a musical phrase, valid musical phrase. So we had to do something. So what we did is to add measured noise on this, on top of this. So we measured the jitter here and with some smoothness constraint we did this. And this is how it sounds. And I'll play the original just for a comparison. So we have just used very minimal information, but with some tweaking, we have reproduced a very natural stimuli. And we are sure that this won't be scaled by any distortion because this is in our control. And also, there was a need to add this Tanpura in the background because if we suggest that this is a rag phrase from some rag, first they have to identify the tonic. So there is a subjectivity in tonic perception, we don't want that bias. And so that's why we put a Tanpura and also this pause, these were all pilot experiments which we decided on that this pause should be long enough and there should be also a metronome because if nothing is given, someone might tap in some arbitrary way and give the focus on the bit and not focus on the melody. So in perception experiment in literature, we had these lit uh, references. So finally, it looks, sounds like this. So this was the form of stimuli used. And also interesting facts are the location of the onsets also were very much important in the perception. If we just relatively shifted the locations, they perceived something else. They focused on something else. And this timbre was also a constant timbre. We found, found the weights heuristically and this was used. And for the distortion temporally, we used a reverse approach of the dynamic time working path. So as we already had these locations of the subsegments, so if we wanted to stretch this very small ray here, we increase the slope of that segment and then resynthesize the speech. It's like giving the time warping path and then come back to the original time domain signal. So this small ray was stretched to this long and this was compensated here because this was a very long nyas and it didn't matter whether it was this short or that one, but we couldn't do here, compensate this loss at the last because that also changed the perception. So I'm not going into detail of every step here, but this is how finally we achieved this temporal distortion. So, so these distortions were decided manually and uh, you know, the slope change and all Yeah, that. slope we tried to change in a continuum. So this is the dimension of the, this is the physical variable, the duration of this. And we changed into factor of one, two, three, four, and gave this continuum of stimuli and wanted to know if the perception was continuous or categorical. So <coughs> I'll come to the results right away. So I'll play the other one just to show how it looks. So it will be playing the, this one. So just focus. So this ray was long and we synthesized it in the same way. And this is how the test was done. It was an online survey. So given this phrase, is this suggestive of the raga? We had a three point scale, strongly suggestive, somewhat and not at all. And also we had a comment box where people, if they perceived it differently, we wanted the comments. So the results are... And, yeah. and they were told that... Uh, they, uh, this is the Rag Deshkar. No, were, not Bhupali. Okay, they, were they were told this is a phrase of Rag Deshkar. Do you agree? If agree, strongly suggestive or otherwise not. 
So results are somewhat interesting. So if that ray was, this is the factor of time scaling of that ray. If that was scaled very little, so all, uh, mostly all of the musicians told this was suggestive. This one corresponds to that. Around 2 to 2.5, I don't have all the points plotted here. So they told it was somewhat suggestive. And beyond around 3, all of them told that was not at all suggestive. And we got many comments from musicians, this was sounding like Raghupali. So this somewhat suggests that there might be a categorization in the perception. So ideally it should be a stiff function, but we had very few examples, so that's why it doesn't look that good. And also we used all the procedures like re repetition of stimuli, randomization, trial blocks. To We had a lot of responses, but we report only these, which are very consistent response. And for the pitch distortion task, I'll just play and ask you if you can find the difference. So the question is, these contours will be played and just by listening, you have to say whether they are same or different. Any responses? Do you feel these are same or different? The graph tells you. Yeah, the graph tells <laughs> Yeah, so graph tells these are different, but surprisingly, many musicians said these are same. If they are only given this difference, like one shifted and one original, they can easily tell it's the and the. There is a slight difference. But if that is embedded into a whole set, then they tend to forget the small variation within. So that is suggestive of categorization. They perceive it holistically and not go into small details. So yeah. The pitch was different by... Yeah, 30, 20 cents here. Okay. It was a DC shift of 20 cents. So this was how the question was asked. Given this pair, are these two same or different? And also let us know if you feel one of them is out of tune. So one original was kept in every set and one was distorted. So this graph is very interesting. I'll little bit be slow to describe this. So the blue one is for musician's response and the main attraction is this is asymmetric. So for deviation of say minus 10, minus 5, 10 and also 15, I don't have the point here, they didn't find it was different. If the deviation was still minus 10 say, they didn't find them as different, they perceived that same. But on the other side, there was a sharp fall. So there is a reason because I already mentioned the ga of this deshkar was already higher. So when we lower this, this comes to a very consonant ga with respect to the tanpura. So then don't focus on the roughness because this is very consonant. So that is that might be the reason they don't feel the difference. And beyond certain level, they are certainly out of tune because they don't make any sense to musicians. But in contrary, non-musicians, they don't perceive consonants or dissonance, maybe. So there was no definite trend. But there was a trend that at plus 5, there was a like drop in identification discrimination score. So there might be an explanation that this original ga was around 393 cents. And adding 5, it makes very close to the equitempered ga, which has a roughness. So that roughness might have disturbed the non-musicians also, and they might have all of them almost went for it is not same. But otherwise, there is no definite trend. And as it was already higher, so plus 30 here is also not same. So I'm not going to further details, but these are interesting finds. And this asymmetry suggests that uh, there is a categorization and also this suggests something about I defining that pseudo steadiness because the pseudo steady note it's steady within some tolerance band so first we started with some heuristic value that's plus minus this much will consider is steady but this somehow recursively tells us that what should be defined as a steady note so yeah. this graph is telling me that five out of the twelve musicians mm -hmm. could not perceive Yeah, there was there. I 
I have to talk to musicians then. So these were all very consistent in uh, as of otherwise. That's why I just put here. But yeah, there are cases where. That is sort of surprising. Yes. Five out of twelve musicians, like yes. a professional. Musician. But the thing is, it was online survey, so they put whatever they felt. Sure. So I don't have any control of whether they are really experienced or they just marked. Oh. This was online survey, yes. and I have the form. You didn't select the musicians. No, 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 no. Uh, because then. Yes, it is an online survey, so it's very hard to generalize. This is just a starting point, but we have to rigorously do it with a lot of attention and control to generalize or finally conclusively remark something. So summary is that there is this identification score drop that is suggestive of categorization as of speech literature. And this discrimination task, this asymmetry is somewhat suggestive and in speech also we get similar looking curves. So we speculate that musicians perceive these melodic phrases holistically and don't pay attention to these small variations. It's like macroscopic versus microscopic view of the phrases. And this was recently reported at NCC in IIT Bombay. So I'll just conclude like this. We have something like showing us that this is interesting, but we are still a little fuzzy about it. We call it cloud by that TED talk, so, but it's insightful. There is a direction, so we might want to explore. So as a future work, we propose that we want to develop a category learning algorithm. So if there are n instances, the degree of difference is n, but the categories present indeed might not be n. That might not be m, which is very less. So if the computer can learn the categories by itself with the distance measure, so that reflects here, redefine the distance measure. And subjective responses, we have to try different baselines. So musician versus non-musician is not really a great baseline, but we had to start with this. And observe the effect of music training and teaching in perception. So it's like the recognition part. So even if they find this is a Deshkar phrase, but what significance they make out of it, that bases on the training and experience of the musician. So what is the effect of that? And also one remark is, uh, do we need to modify the procedure for music from speech? Because we are all borrowing the methods from speech. So these are some open-ended questions. Yeah, I think that's quite it. I thank Microsoft Research for providing this platform. This was a part of Comp Music. And my guide. These are some of the references. Thank you. For your online survey, what service were you using? Were you doing this yourself? Is it Mechanical Turk or something else? Uh, could you please repeat the question? For your online survey, yes. What service were you? Did you it, cut this up yourself? Was it on Mechanical Turk something else? It was a site called Survey Gizmo. I made the form myself and the responses was noted. And so who did you broadcast this to? This was uh, sent to the mailing lists, so all the Izmir mailing lists, so whoever works on these areas. So this was broadcast to them and I got about uh, 120 responses mixed with musician, non-musician. Many of them were incomplete. After checking the consistency and all, I report 12 musicians and 8 non-musicians. So, yeah. out of 120, you got 20? Yes, which were very reliable. And still the question remains that if they claim themselves to be musicians, do they really know the music or just like that they ticked that they are musicians? So, yes. But, but it should not be hard to get 12 musicians in a room and get Yeah, that. we... We would do that. It is a very recent work, so we hadn't been able to continue it further, but we'll. So how does this compare uh, in, in the whole cover detection problem, right? Mm -hmm. uh, there is a lot of work that has been done in detecting covers mm -hmm. um, of rock music or pop or things like that. So if you just were to put it to uh, renditions of the same uh, Indian classical uh, song mm -hmm. into one of these algorithms. How bad do they perform? Do you have any sense for that? Yeah, first of all, uh, I don't know whether they work on pitch data. Most of them, the cover detection, work on musical scores. 
So we have recently submitted one Izmir paper on that. So a score is somewhat equivalent to that music transcription. So we did a cover detection like task. So given a query by humming something like that, and in a big database, can you rank order all the tracks? And we have like uh, there is a measure called mean reciprocal ratio. It's kind of a map score, and that is about 0.89. So we are able to find the original track from which it belongs, say the cover or the refrain or the bandish. And also we can rank order the ragas, like which are the melodically similar ragas. So now the motivation uh, or the direction is to make some network kind of thing, the interrelation between these melodies. So say some recommendation system, we don't have a melodically similar recommendation. So if we ask for rag deshkar, we'll find rag desh as a suggestion. But that is not melodically similar, but textually similar. But by these analysis, can we find a mechanic, uh, melodically similar, like say Bhupali or Shud Kalyan, those kind of ragas should be recommended. So those are some directions we are finding. This has some potential in the database navigation, but on the contrary, it's kind of an oversimplification. It doesn't really capture the characteristic glides, because those are carrying the information of the characteristic and these are just the sequence to identify the raga. So one is raga identification and one is raga characterization. So those two are kind of diverging problems. So, but we may, may feel some sense that this pseudo steady and the glides, if we can use both information, so then might be will head somewhat close. And this data is coming from uh, Mirex or? Yeah, Mirex Hindustani database, uh, we haven't used that, but this is a computer data set. We have about 350 hours of data, Hindustani data. Yes, sir. I was just wondering, like, from this wider, small ones, and the classifications of different genres mm -hmm. of music, did you find any interesting, uh, interesting stories or findings that we can tell about uh, the culture which uh, promoted this music or this sort of thing? Yes, so there is uh, another study being carried out in our lab, which is the style classification. So given the North Indian versus South Indian versus, say, Karnati, uh, Turkish music, so based on only the pitch contour, can we characterize those features? So that is kind of a genre classification. So given the music piece, we extract the pitch and then say suggest whether this belongs to Hindustani, Carnatic, or Turkish, or maybe Western. So we haven't been able to, like we have not started Western, but in these kind of genres where there are variabilities within the pitch, like the glides are there, the vibratos or the oscillations are there. So we have these classification problem, yes. Yeah, just another question about like classification. So have you done any like systematic study about say similarities between uh, rocks which are like morning ragas uh, yeah, we haven't done any formal study on that, but morning ragas, yeah, maybe the shapes of these characteristic glides or oscillations might be interesting to see, but as, of, as a musician, I don't feel there can be any very reliable feature which, which distinguishes morning versus evening raga. It's just a feeling as a musician, but I haven't tried, so I won't comment right now. So you talked about categorical perception experiments in yes. Western music. Yes. Uh, how uh, means is there anything which you could compare with your results and see if it's? I mean. Yeah. So our results are we don't claim it is scalable, so we don't uh, claim any numbers. But the shape, like the discrimination score, the shape, and the identification score, these shapes, these are coming very similar. So from there we are speculating there might be a categorization. Yeah, but yeah, they have percentage accuracy and all, and they have a lot more listeners to do the subjective experiment. So we haven't scaled that, so we are not reported. Because I was thinking, I mean, Western music and Indian music uh, emphasizes on different dimensions. Yes, yes, versus yes, melody. yes. And that might lead to different, slightly differences in the perception. Yes, uh, yes. So th it was a very hard step to decide, decide on these parameters, so how we bring the parallel to Indian music. 
So they have used melodic intervals, but we can't use intervals. So we have used some feature of the pitch, so we used the DC shift. And tonal duration was kind of okay, but they had very stable tones. We have the glides. Now we could have distorted these glides also. Say we have this glide here and we could stretch that. But in a previous study, we, we have seen that the glides preserve their shape. They are not time warped as much. So there was no meaning and even distorting the glides, we have a pilot experiment. Their musicians say this is not at all a valid phrase. So don't ask me, this is suggestive or what. So this reconfirms whatever we found in the previous study. Yeah. Yeah, but there is a lot of scope to explore further. And the, there are two approaches. The MIR community, some of them prefer big data. So analysis on like thousands of hours and all. But for these perception tests, we can't really have those many examples and generalize. So we have to start with a very good example where every musician first agrees that this is a valid example to start with and then vary the parameters and have controlled experiment and what timbre to use. This metronome is still an unsolved problem. So we have come up with these locations where it's acceptable. But if we change that, the change this location, the perception changes, but we don't know the reason why it happens. And also, so this gives me uh, personally a perception, uh, a redefinition of rhythm or like singing tempo. So the tempo in Indian music, we always go by the percussion, but the alap or the unmetered section also have a tempo, so the pulsation. So I strongly feel that could be like having a correlation with the relative durations of the notes. So that is kind of a tempo and if we sing, we have a sensation of beat at onsets. So if we have that, is there any harmonic relation of the relative durations? So this is something very fuzzy, but we'll work on this. These are some future directions. Uh, how did you like, decide where should the heart beats? Uh, these were all pilot experiments. So we had a group of musicians, mainly friends from ITCSRA. So who unfortunately disappeared in the final test. <laughs> Which is a good thing. Yeah. So they all helped me in these pilot experiments to decide on all these factors. But when the whole survey was ready, so they were all... Yeah, because, uh, uh, like, uh, there might be a correlation like uh, uh, note which has to be in should be... Yes, uh, there are... More, more frequently with, uh, on heartbeats of a uh, tal like that. There is no written down relations like that. And as a musician also, I don't feel in performing music, there is in notation system it is so if you have a musical score of a composition you have all the like lines of the or the focuses on long steady notes and at note onsets but there is a very long gap between performing music and this like notation so this bridge is not very clear so we can't directly use those things but yeah there is scope of experiment to standardize this Each year, Microsoft Research hosts hundreds of influential speakers from around the world, including leading scientists, renowned experts in technology, book authors, and leading academics, and makes videos of these lectures freely available.